what's going on everybody and welcome to the channel or welcome back to the channel if you're a returning subscriber i have been playing star wars jedi survivor for the past how long has it been out for it hasn't even been a week yet but i've been playing it since it came out um and i have to say this game right here is literally the embodiment of what a sequel for a game should be there's so much about this game that i actually love and i feel like in almost every aspect they improved on the formula that they came out with the original game before i get too much into this video i will say that one um the video will pretty much have little to no spoilers at all. I pretty much try to keep all the cutscenes and everything that you'll see on the screen pretty much either early or just not important stuff that most people will care about. On top of that, I am also playing on the Xbox Series X. Go over some of the things, just know that was the system that I was playing this on. Now, as far as the game goes, this game, like I said, is pretty phenomenal and even with me being a Star Wars fan, I feel like people that aren't really into Star Wars themselves can actually find a lot of joy into this game. Now, the story of this game actually takes place five years after the original game of Jedi Fallen Order. And for the people that are actually wondering, do you need to play the original game before you play this one? I would suggest either play it or watch a video online that explains everything that's going on. They reference a lot of stuff that happened in the first game or just pretty much this time jump of five years that happened. But there's a lot of things that the, um, that the characters in the game will kind of talk about and you just, so you have a better understanding of what's going on, I would definitely suggest getting some of that background information before. It's part of Game Pass if you have it on Xbox and it's usually always on sale, but I would definitely go ahead and get that game out the way. Or like I said, watch a YouTube video, but fully understand what's going on. I would suggest before you get into it, you'll get so much more out the story. Now, speaking of the story, another thing is that this game, as far as characters go, I prefer the characters so much more in this game. That five year age up that they did made all the characters more interesting. In the first game, you know, Cal and the rest of the characters were okay, but I really didn't feel any connection. Even when I beat the game, I didn't feel like there was anything that I missed if I would necessarily ever see these particular characters again. I always wanted Respawn to make another Jedi game, but even if they really didn't talk about the main characters, it wouldn't really bother me that much. But after playing this game, I'm now with the mindset of I'm so happy that they actually decided to keep the characters and flesh them out even more. The game does what I feel is a pretty good job at just kind of explaining real world issues why the characters all split up and why they're not all together at the start of this game. Another huge thing that I have to say that I just love about this game is that they didn't have some really dumb, oh no, you have to start from scratch type of thing again. If you actually played Fallen Order and you leveled up your character, for the most part, Cal is the same, he has the same abilities that he had when you left Jedi Fallen Order. And I think that's actually great. I, it does get very tiresome when games actually make you go through the whole song and dance again of getting all your abilities back. Like there's some amnesia or something happens, whatever. Uh, he has some issue with the force, blah, 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 and you lose everything. You actually have all these abilities already unlocked and then it just kind of expounds on it from there. And I have to say that was one of my favorite parts of playing this game um, because you actually feel more like a knight and not so much a Padawan since he was knighted in the last game. You do have more stances into the game. To be honest, they add more customization in general, which I'll talk about in a second. But as far as the stances go, you can pick your regular single style lightsaber stance. You can do your dual bladed staff. You can do dual wielding. And now you have a blaster. And I believe the last one's called a cross guard. Kind of like the Kylo Ren from the last Star Wars movies that we don't talk about that never Ever existed. I am using the cross guard right now in the dual wielding. I actually like that combo the most. The blaster, personally for me, wasn't really a big fan, so I really didn't use it that much, but it is nice to mix and match the stances. This game has so much customized options. In the first game, it had very light customized options, and it was like a lot of them involved you wearing a poncho. I was never a fan of the poncho, but you know, just the whole customizing game was just, in the last game, was very, very minimal. It was like you could change the color of BD, you could change the color of your ship, you know, you could change the color of your clothes, or you could change a few different outfits, but it was very small. In this game, they took it to the next level. You can change everything about your outfit, mix and match it. You can even change Kyle's hair and on his face, on his head. A lot of the hairstyles I didn't care for, but when I did get that right hairstyle and that right facial hair, I just rocked it throughout the whole game. What, what I felt 
um, would be how he would look. And I like it because I feel like with all the customizations that you can do with him, with Droid and everything like that, I feel like it gave you the option to almost where once you beat the game, you're going to end the game with no two characters looking exactly alike. Because I think it gave you just enough customization options. Sure, not all the clothes were my favorite, but I feel like there was still a lot of different customization options that you could have in the game. And I loved actually looking and finding these items. This game is so much bigger in every way. You have shops that you can go to to purchase stuff which weren't in the first game. The world just seems so much bigger. The enemy types, you seem to have much more. Um, I, find it I found it pretty interesting while I was running through the game. I didn't find myself running into the same type of enemy every second, like the last Star Wars game. Um, I didn't find myself keep bumping into a bunch of Inquisitors. But I guess what made this game so interesting is because the first game felt like it was so close to a Star Wars Disney property. Still good, but it felt like it was still, Disney was heavily looking over the shoulder. This one, it felt like, like Respawn had more of the freedom to kind of do whatever they wanted. And it really, really shows because they seem to be going, now yes, the game starts off with you on Coruscant, but then it starts going to all these other worlds that you've never seen or heard of or anything like that. And you start seeing and find out about new creatures and the story starts unraveling and it just looks like it's this, you know, outer rim type of huge thing going on. And at no point in time did I ever lose interest into the story. The story kept me going, the performance kept me going the cutscene seemed like it was straight out of a movie well how well the performances were when you was in those cinematic cutscenes and i really feel that the whole team at respawn really did they really worked their heart out to make this a great game a part of me really wants some of these people to make a star wars movie because Obviously, Star Wars movie stopped at episode six. The big elephant in the room is, ever since this game launched, this game has had so many bug-related issues. Now, personally, I did not have a lot of bug-related issues, though I did have some. One of them being, um, as soon as I walked into a room with a big old giant animal or monster, it just popped away. And it wasn't that it just disappeared and could still attack me. It just vanished. It was gone. There was no more fight scene. It was over with. Other things like a robot coming over to me, but its arms and legs were kind of like that pre-rendered when you're first making a game and it's stretched out like a T-motion and just floated over to me. Frame rate drops, definitely had frame rate drops. It wasn't to the point where it was unplayable, but I definitely had some issues in it. Now I know that PC people had it significantly harder um, than, than ones on consoles. I feel like the, there's been more talk about the PlayStation version, but I could be wrong. It actually could have been performing better than Xbox. I just personally seem like I heard from people that the PlayStation 5 version was having issues from people I know. Either way, there's definitely issues. Now, with that being the case, um, as of the recording of this video, which is actually May the 2nd, EA has dropped a, a long list of patches for the game. The PC patch already came out on May the 1st, and then the console patch for the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S come out on the 2nd, uh, which is today. So it should hopefully help a lot of those issues. Now, in reality, before that patch was coming out, because of it having so much issues on PC, I would just have to say, don't don't buy this game for PC. If PC is the only way that you can actually play this game, I would say just go ahead and skip it um, for right now and wait till the game is actually, you know, polished and fixed up. Um, after the patch, I really can't say for PC what, you know, because again, I'm recording this early on May the 2nd and I haven't really heard anything. And I don't think a lot of tests have came out as of yet on how well it actually fixes issues. As far as the console version goes, I've been playing it with the day one patch since it came out. A lot of the reviewers had to play the game before the day one patch and they just gave their experience. Um, as far as me playing it with the day one patch, the game was already great. And I already loved it. Of course, I had a lot of hiccups. I had some frame rate dips here and there. I had issues with the graphics, um, you know, little things like that. But for the most part, it didn't stop me from joining the game. One thing that I don't even think they're going to fix, but which I wish they fixed, is with all the customization, it makes a lot of clipping going on, meaning that 
a lot of like if someone puts their hand on Kyle's shoulder, if I'm wearing a particular outfit, it goes through his clothes. And I know it's a little bit harder sometimes when you're getting when you're playing a game that everything is motion capped through, but you have different clothing. It just kind of that that was one of the few things that did take me out of the experience because you can customize, but it made me almost not want to at certain times because I hate when I see so much clipping or when how maybe he's turning his head and looking and his head's going through you know his scarf for example my thoughts on the game is should you pick this up if you have this game on console yes you are doing yourself a disjustice not having it this game i do strongly feel like it has a game of the year potential it needs those patches and it kind of sucks it probably should have waited a little bit longer before this game came out but i feel like they want to get out before zelda they want to get out before final fantasy and now armor core is coming out so i think they wanted that little window and the only thing that came out is redfall and no one cares about that so i kind of feel like they wanted to make sure that this was a good time and space to drop it at but ultimately I wish that they did wait a couple more months just to get that little bit more polished because then this game could have been a smooth, perfect game. But unfortunately, no matter how good Respawn is, EA still has to show their head just a little bit. And speaking of which, I, I actually personally know people that refuse to play any EA games, including this one, because EA's name is branded on it. Do not let that stop you. Do not allow that. Don't allow EA to affect the developers that respawn that have nothing to do with EA's decisions that are just good, honest working people just trying to do their job, make the best Star Wars game possible, which this is. This is one of the better Star Wars things that's came out ever since Disney bought out Star Wars, you know, outside of things like maybe the Mandalorian TV show, and little stuff like that, or the Clone Wars or Bad Batch, if you're a fan of that. But as far as this is definitely up there in top tier Star Wars content since Disney bought Star Wars. Definitely pick this up if you have one of the newer consoles. Also, if you have it on, but if you have it on PC, again, uh, I would still get it, but just make sure those patches are ironed out first. Like I said, a day one patch already came out yesterday as the recording of this video is on May the 2nd. And if, and depending on how that goes, um, hopefully it will run fine. If you guys enjoy this video, um, have a lot more to come very, very soon. And also make sure if you're interested in the game, on my second channel, I do have the first hour gameplay of Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Thanks again for watching and making it all the way to the end. Make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. Subscribing is great. Liking definitely helps the algorithm pushing this video out, out to more people. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the rest of your day. Catch you in the next one.